Hey everybody, um, today I just wanted to do a quick video on um, what we would call the factory pattern in LabVIEW. Um, so what this is, is this is a, an, an object-oriented design pattern um, that you can use in applications uh, that follow like an object-oriented structure. Um, and this kind of allows you to kind of control um, what class specifically what children classes get implemented kind of uh, dynamically right so um, the idea is we can have like a parent class and then we can have children classes that are able to override that parent class um, and override its methods um, but this way right we, we, we don't need like a case structure or something where we're saying hey you know load this class load this class and we have to drop each one um, onto the block diagram in that case structure and pass out the one we want. This way we can basically load them dynamically um, either from memory or from disk. So um, we'll show that. Um, and so this example here I was, I'm going to walk through. This actually uh, wasn't made by me. It was made by Elijah Carey a few years ago. Um, it's on the NI forums but yeah really good ex simple example that just shows what factory pattern is and how you can use it. So just to start off, we have three classes here. So we have our generic plugin. Um, so this is our uh, kind of parent class. Um, and then we've got two other children classes. So we've got orange and blue. So, and if you open these up, um, go to properties and look at inheritance, you can see that it uh, inherits from generic plugin. So they are children um, and yeah so you also can open the uh, class hierarchy you can see there so we've got a uh, our generic plugin and we've got orange and blue our children of generic um, so our generic plugin has um, these two uh, methods here get name and get color um, and these are dynamic dispatch so you can see here I open these up you got your little squiggly uh, class terminals here that lets you know this is a dynamic dispatch um, so yeah we're just outputting a string here um, then the children can override this and they can pass out additional um, things that are specific to their implementation and then we've also got this get color which again is doing you know essentially the same thing we're just passing out a color so um, and then we've also got uh, these other methods here that are um, not part of the children, but we're able to um, use these to basically load the child that we want. And I'll walk through these in just a minute. Um, we'll show you those. Um, but yeah, and then in our children classes, we just have the get name and get color that we are overriding. So again, you see the little squigglies, dynamic dispatch. Um, and so we get a different message in the orange class and we get a different color so instead of getting black we're outputting orange so yeah just a way to load and you know we have orange and blue we could create green red yellow any amount of colors we could have as many children as we want and this will work with all of those so um, let's just open this little demo factory and look at how it works um, so it's really, really simple. You can see um, all we have just like a simple while loop. It's going to just go back and forth over and over and over again. Um, and then based off of whatever we've selected in this little uh, ring, um, or an enum, sorry, um, we're going to load the class based off of that. And then um, we're going to call the get name and the get color uh, methods. Um, but based off of which class is loaded, we're going to do different things. Um, so let's take a look at this, how we're loading that. So based off of the uh, enum, um, we're loading basically a relative path of one of these classes. So rather than, I mean, we could in this case structure actually just drop the classes in there. Um, this is advantageous in that it doesn't necessarily have to load everything into memory automatically. I mean, if it's part of your project, it's going to be loaded into memory. But in like an application, like a built EXE, um, you can actually just have these on disk and it can load them dynamically as a plugin. Um, so yeah, we're just loading that relative path based off of what's selected. Um, and then if we go down here, 
this is just building from that relative path and based off of where um, your project is and the components in it, um, building the absolute path. That way you can open up this project in different locations and it doesn't break everything. You don't have to reset up all your pathing and whatnot. Um, yeah, and then uh, the load by path. This is where we're actually gonna see how you implement the factory pattern. So this is basically the core of the factory pattern. This uh, little snippet here is basically what you need to do anytime you wanna implement factory pattern. Where we're going to just use this get lab view class default value. Um, so you can always just go up here to the uh, cluster class invariant section of your functions palette. You're going to find these uh, class functions. Um, so these are handy, um, as well as we're also going to be using some of these uh, two more specific class uh, and two more generic class as well. Um, those are useful as well when working with classes. Um, so yeah, we're going to use the get lab view class default value, which basically just allows us to um, uh, pass in a path and it's going to return the class. But if you notice, this wire doesn't actually look like the wires on the generic plugin, nor does it look like the wires that we see in here. Um, and that's because this is actually returning like the top level parent class. So again, if we go back to our project, let's go reopen that class hierarchy. So our generic plugin, if you notice, actually inherits from LabVIEW object. And so that is the parent, you know, any class you create always inherits from LabVIEW object. Um, so, you know, it, when we're creating a hierarchy, whether it's horizontally or vertically, right, everything always ties back to LabVIEW object. Um, so we're actually loading an instance in of LabVIEW object. Um, and not the specific class. You know, regardless of what path we give this, it's always going to output it in this type. Um, but then we can use this function here, to more specific class, to basically cast that class to something more specific. So um, our generic plugin is what we want to use. So if you're if you're loading um, like a dynamic dispatch type structure. Um, where you have like a parent and you have children, you always want to just cast the uh, parent here. So you're going to drop the parent down, um, and that's going to cast it from LabVIEW object to that uh, parent class. Um, but it's going to carry the actual uh, uh, object of the child that you loaded. So right, if in this absolute path we're loading blue, we're gonna have blue on that wire, even though it looks like the parent class. So um, that way we can basically have, whether we have one, one child class, 50 child classes, hundreds of child classes, we can just have this one structure, and this will be able to load every single child of generic plugin just fine. Um, so this is basically the factory pattern. This structure right here is what you need to do. Um, and yeah, works great. Um, so yeah, let's go back to that example. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, um, so you can see we're just loading that class based off of the plugin. Um, and then we're just calling the get name and get color. Um, and based off of whatever class is actually on this wire, right? It says generic plugin, but it's basically going to be whatever thing actually gets loaded by the factory pattern. So. Although it says generic plugin, it doesn't mean that it's always loading the generic plugin class. It could be a child implementation depending on what is loaded. So let's run this. So I can run it and you see we get the default um, uh, parent class. So um, for example, I can uh, probe this guy and you can see that it is generic plugin. Um, but I can also go to orange and you can see that now we've loaded our orange class and we actually get the methods of the orange class, not of the parent generic plugin class. I can change to blue and you can see it changes to blue plugin class and we get the, the methods now uh, do whatever the blue plugin class does. And I can create even more and more of these as I want. 
um, if I want to add a red class, like I said, or a yellow or a green or whatever, um, I can do that. Um, so yeah, really simple. It keeps your code really clean. Um, so for example, if um, I wanted to add new colors, right? I actually, this part of my code, sorry, this part right here, I actually don't need to change at all, right? If I want to create a red and a yellow and whatever, um, I just need to now be able to load those other classes, which if I have some sort of enum um, that's a type def, I can just go update the type def. And then I just need to make sure that when I'm loading those, um, you know, in this case, we have a case structure. Um, there's also a million other ways you could actually determine which one to load uh, at runtime, right? There's an infinite amount of solutions there. Um, so, um, yeah, if you have like a case structure, you would need to add just the case for that new class. But if you're loading these some other way, right, then, you know, that might change how you're loading those. Um, but yeah, we could create a whole new class and we don't actually need to change the main structure of our code. We just need to be able to load that new class and we can dynamically load whatever plugin we want um, easily. Um, and, you know, especially in instances where you might have you know, hundreds of children classes, but you only need one of them. Well, you don't want to necessarily load a hundred classes into memory um, by having like a case structure with, you know, a whole bunch of different classes and different cases. Um, this way allows you to just by load it from a path and then it gets loaded into memory there. So can be very advantageous there. Um, but yeah, that is basically the uh, factory pattern in LabVIEW. It's a great way, um, you know, to take a uh, basic object-oriented programming and significantly enhance its capabilities. Um, it's relatively simple. Um, and yeah, if you have questions about object-oriented programming and some of the stuff that I've talked about here, about maybe like what dynamic dispatch is or what LabVIEW classes are, um, I have some previous videos already made on those. Go check those out. Um, that should help answer some of those questions as well. But yeah, other than that, thank you guys for watching. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.